Before we start, we need to take a look at these two software and what they are. I think we are all familiar with Maya and what it can do, because it is a very popular animation software that is actively used in many fields like game development, VFX, creating commercials, and many other stuff. On the other hand, Cascador Now, which is a way fresher and newer software, came to light only about two years ago, and it was released by Neke Studio, a game development house based in Cyprus, and the software took more than 10 years of development and work and about 3 years of closed beta testing with more than 100,000 people who joined, to be finally released in 2022. Now let's talk about what Maya packs and what are its key features. As you might expect, Maya is a full 3D package, meaning that you can pretty much do anything with it, including animation, modeling characters, props and environments, and doing UV unwrapping for those objects, in addition to texturing, while also you have the ability to rig those characters and vehicles manually or using plugins. After that, you can build your scene layout and animate those characters with a wide variety of animation tools that Maya provides. But this is not everything. You can also do lighting and rendering inside the software. Adding to that, Maya has the capabilities to create very nice visual effects that you can see in movies like explosions, fluids, destruction effects, and many, many more stuff. Thanks to Bifrost, which is a procedural node-based software integrated inside Maya for creating such visual effects, which can also generate buildings and huge cities based on a set of rules you make like the number of stories in a building or the number of windows in a level. It can also create procedural force and environments, which is really needed. And before we talk about the features of Cascador in comparison to Maya, for those who don't know what it is, Cascador is a 3D animation software designed to create character animations while trying to avoid traditional motion capture as much as possible and even traditional animation methods. It uses a physics-based approach to allow you as an animator to create realistic animations for projects like film or video games. And Cascador relies on keyframe animation and it uses AI to refine the character's poses and movements to make them more believable. Now that we know what Cascador is, let's move to the key features of the software. And the first one is that it got the auto-posing tool, which is a smart rig powered by AI and it makes the process of creating poses much easier and fun while being time efficient. And the way it works is, if you move the rig or the elbow for example, the whole body moves accordingly in a more natural pose. The second feature is that the software provides what is called auto physics, which uses physics based algorithms to analyze the animations created whether by you or by other people and suggests you a more physical accurate one with a little change to the original animation. And to add secondary motion to your animation, Cascador also provides options to create overlapping, jiggling and bouncing movements and all those additions can really make a difference to your animation game. Cascador can also transfer animations between characters no matter what their skeletal structure looks like thanks to its advanced retargeting system and another fun and useful feature that Cascador has is called mocap and it is a video to animation tool which extracts motion to a video and turn it into mockup data that can be applied to your characters. And this tool is still in its alpha version, but the results that it gives are pretty good considering that it only uses only one video of the camera angle. And with the software, you can make your character interact with the environment such as the floor or go up and down the stairs. Cascador also packs a lot of other features like the quick rigging tool that drops a rig on your character automatically, as well as the animation and baking feature that makes any animation editable, whether it is from XMO or any other source in addition to other stuff. If you are struggling to level up your work or maybe your art and you want to learn new skills, quality online courses are one of the best ways to do so. I have personally been struggling with a lot of procrastination and being consistent. That's why I picked up this awesome class called Management and Productivity by Jacob Lamb. If you've been following the channel, I've been talking about Skillshare for a long time and how it helped me with various skills. And in case you don't know what Skillshare is, Skillshare is the largest online learning platform offering multiple categories of classes like film, illustration, animation, you name it, and you will find it there. And if your summer break isn't over yet, because I know that not everyone's summer break is the same, and this might be your chance to tackle that thing that you always wanted to learn and get ready for the next season. For me, 
Time management is a big issue with art and managing the channel. So Jacob's six method workflow helped me a lot. For instance, distractions can be shifted to their proper place on your schedule instead of completely removing them. So go ahead, click the link in the description and the first 500 people to sign up using my link will receive one month of Skillshare for free. And you can choose any course you want to follow along. Now back to the video. Now, after checking out the features of each one of them, it is time I think to draw the line and decide which one is actually better for your needs. First of all, since Cascador is only a rigging and animation tool, let's keep things on a level playing field and only compare those parts. For rigging, I would be lying if I said there is a contest here, because Maya is simply too powerful compared to Cascador currently. In fact, Maya is arguably the best rigging software in the industry, whereas Cascador, yeah sure, it can rig, but would you really want to use it for that? I'm not convinced so far. As a general rule, Cascador comes with an auto-rigging feature that can automatically rig humanoid characters, with some exceptions that you can get away with, which is honestly a nice system, and easy to navigate through. And then, it offers manual rigging, which you can use to rig any character type, assign FK, IK, and so on. However, it's not without issues. The process can be tedious, and it is hard to move around in the 3D space, Besides, it lacks any form of customization and it doesn't have weight painting, which means you can decide with precision which parts of the mesh are affected by the bone movement. And to be honest, this is very important for any animation project. And when it comes to Maya, where do I even begin? Well, even if you ignore all the amazing scripts and plugins, it is still so rich in tools and features and it is considered a rigging paradise for any expert or enthusiast. First of all, moving around in the 3D space is super smooth and enjoyable. And the same can be said about moving the bones around, because it offers a quick rigging feature of its own. And essentially, you can rig anything and everything with the biggest possible amount of freedom, such as vehicles, industrial machines, and other mechanical designs, and you can create all different kinds of interactions with the help of constraints, unlike in Cascador, which is conceptually designed for characters. Also, Maya offers highly customizable IK and FK setups, in addition to skinning and weight painting. Also, blend shapes, facial animations, and other stuff like lattice and cluster deformers that are non destructive and give you extra control over mesh deformation, as well as uncloth and end hair. And this is important for the simulation aspect. You also have a better parenting system, constraints, and rig behaviors, and the list goes on. But still, this is just scratching the surface, since it is a very advanced rigging tool that you can use on even the most complex rigs in the industry. You know, stuff that you can see on movies, like characters such as Thanos, the Hulk, or the characters found in the Avatar movie. So as you can see, Maya is of course better when it comes to rigging, and without a doubt, it is the best. But when it comes to animation, things get way messier, and it is very tricky to separate between the two. If you watch the video we made about Blender vs Cascador, the discussion becomes more of a manual animation versus AI assisted and physics tools on the other hand, which is not a simple choice, that's for sure. Technically, it is also possible to manually animate in Cascador. However, the posing in Maya is much better, so moving and rotating the bones around is so smoother and easier, and a similar thing can be said about moving in 3D space. In a nutshell, it really depends on whether you want AI and auto physics or not. And like I said in the previous video, I'm more conservative about it. In both auto posing and auto physics, it is the software trying to guess the movement that you want to achieve, and many times, it wouldn't guess the results that you're looking for, and you will need to adjust it anyway. Basically, if you want purely realistic animation, Cascador is probably the one to go for, because it is easier to create, especially for secondary motions and all sorts of physically based behaviors. However, if you want to have a full control over the animation and create specific movements that can enhance a story, triggers viewers' emotions, or for visual storytelling elements, such as a character walk cycle, specific reactions, and so on, or if you want something stylized especially, it's probably better to do it manually. You see, animation is more than just simple physics, and it is a craft 
that I think exceeds simple reels and what better tool to achieve this than Maya. It is, I think, a more of a complete tool and offers an incredible graph editor that is easy to move around and assign keys to. In addition to the ability to add more tools with Mail and Python scripts, which many are doing and offering to the community as plugins. On top of that, it is easier to make stylized animations in Maya, whereas in Cascador, it focuses only on realistic animations. So, as a final verdict, it is much easier to achieve realistic animations in Cascador, especially if you are not an animator or if you have little to no experience. And this can save you a lot of time. And when it comes to anything else, like stylized animations, hero shots, or if you want to have full control, a manual workflow found in Maya is going to be better, even though it is harder and would take more time and a lot of learning, which is necessary to learn any 3D software. But before we end the video, we gotta answer the question of which software is more suitable for animators. And honestly, I think it highly depends on what kind of work you do and who you are working for. Because if you want to join the big studios, the answer is obviously gonna be Maya. Because the software is the industry standard in animation. Mainly because it is well established into their pipelines and it is more customizable and it gives you more control as an animator to do whatever you want. On the other hand, if you mostly do freelance work or if you are a part of an indie team, then Cascador is gonna be of a great help and it's gonna be a no-brainer as it can deliver great results quickly and easily, even if you are not necessarily an animator because you actually can see a lot of projects nowadays done with only one person and in my opinion Cascador encourages solo creators so it helps to worry less about animation and more about directing other aspects of your projects. And I can't emphasize this enough but Cascador is so much fun to work with. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.